What's going on everyone? In today's episode, it's obviously raining pretty hard today, so we're not gonna stick to our normal content. We're gonna take you guys on a really fun journey, learning about Michigan's storied history of a very commonly known bean, but something you probably don't know all that much about, the navy bean. So if you've been to the grocery store, you've probably been down the bean aisle. The bean aisle is a very overwhelming section full of large beans, red beans, small beans, black beans, even lima beans. And all beans have really similar characteristics, but there's one bean in particular that stands out in terms of its nutrition value, as well as its structural integrity, and that's the navy bean. So when you're looking at beans, they all pretty much have the same breakdown. When it comes to vitamins and minerals, protein per gram, they're all very similar. What's not similar is the size. And when you're looking at the size of bean, that actually really matters when it comes to the special use case for the navy bean, as we're gonna talk about. You see, when you look at things like lima beans, lima beans, they're really bulky. They're at the large end of the spectrum. Then you come down to something like a, like a kidney bean, right? Kidney beans are quite large still in size and they don't really lay all that flat because they're kind of, a, well, a kidney shape. Then you have black beans. Now black beans are quite a lot smaller than kidney beans, but they're still fairly large despite having the same nutritional breakdown per pound, right? This one pound bag has really similar characteristics to the navy bean. However, what you're getting with navy beans is compact nutrition. Navy beans are some of the smallest beans that you're gonna find. Per bag, you're gonna get way more, meaning it actually is a whole lot more compact and very efficient on the ships. So you see, back in the day, the military got most of their protein, if not all of their protein, from meat. But prior to the 1900s, storing that meat was really difficult, and oftentimes it was either dried or salt cured which led to other problems down the road, but drying was a really kind of time sensitive process. It was not only that, but it was very bulky and really expensive. And so the military set out to find a better protein alternative. And that answer was answered from a gentleman named John D. Long, this guy. Now, John D. Long at the time in the early 1900s was serving as the basically the advisor for the Navy. And he was serving under William McKinley. Now, William McKinley was the president at the time, and the two of them worked hand in hand to find out not only a lightweight alternative, but a shelf stable alternative to meat that served as a protein supplement that was not only lightweight, saved space, but was also highly nutritious in not only protein, but vitamins and minerals to give fighters and people on the ships the energy they need for a fraction of the cost. And that answer was found in a small little white bean that is now known as the navy bean, but at the time was just a small little white bean previously found in Peru that had been growing there for thousands of years. So once they settled on this perfectly ideal small bean that was unlike all the other beans available at the time that were large, fragile, bulky, heavy, and still provided the same nutritional sustenance that all the other beans provided, they had to figure out how to grow this little tiny white bean from Peru in the United States. And so with the help of Michigan State University, they not only advised on how to grow and cultivate this bean, but they also helped widely distribute the seeds to farmers. And that is how the bean ended up here in Michigan. And that's kind of where our story begins. Now, when farmers started growing this bean, a lot of the farmers, because the help came from Michigan State University, a lot of the farmers just stayed in Michigan. And because of its proximity to a lot of ports and our waterways, a lot of the farmers ended up on this side of the state. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But behind us is one of the largest farms that actually cultivated the navy bean. Now, this farm right here at the time was a little over 700 acres. And this was one of the largest farms in this side of the state growing navy beans and was actually one of the largest producers of the navy bean for production. Now, all that amazing production on that many acres yielded roughly around 50,000 pounds of navy beans, or right around 25 tons of navy beans, which at the time was one of the largest productions of navy beans in all of Michigan. So once that problem was solved and farmers were then growing this bean for the navy, the next question asked is, well, how do we get all these beans being grown to the navy? Now, obviously things like rail car, trucking, those were all options, but they weren't really very commercially viable for large production. So what farmers did was they enlisted the help of ships, oddly. And in Michigan, because we have the Great Lakes, we have lots of water. 
and it made transport of these beans very easy. Since a lot of the ports were located over on the East Coast, farmers then had to ask the question of how are they gonna get the harvest from the farms to the ports? And that question was answered with the help of water. Water's been used for thousands of years to transport goods. And in the 1900s, beans were one of those goods that was transported on this very waterway. Now this waterway right here is the St. Clair River and it actually empties into Lake St. Clair, which empties into the Detroit River, which then enters into Lake Erie. And what farmers would do is they'd send their beans on a ship, which was a great way to get their goods from Michigan to New York at the time, which could then be sent via rail car to any of the other connecting ports on the East Coast. And this is what made Port Huron and East Michigan such an important part to this question of how to get the harvest to the ports and how to get this small little white bean to the Navy. The problem persisted for quite a few years though that farmers couldn't find a very efficient way of getting their harvest from the farms to the ports. That wasn't until about 1960 when a gentleman named E.W. Kiefer and four other businessmen persuaded the Port Huron Terminal to lease out the terminal to ship goods like beans. And in 1960, E.W. Kiefer got his wish and a boat named the Elise Schulte was loaded with 1,600 pounds of Navy beans and headed towards London, England. Once the Elise Schulte made its first successful voyage, shipping Navy beans from Port Huron, Michigan to London, England, that officially put Port Huron on the map as a place that could successfully move and transport Navy beans. From that point, business progressed into 1975, which basically made Port Huron the bean capital of the world, specifically the Navy bean capital of the world. And that is basically where we lead to today and how this amazing place came to be and why it's called the Bean Dock and why Port Huron is known for this very, very little tiny white bean grown in Peru for over a thousand years, now called the Navy Bean. After all this talk of beans and the fact that it was rainy and cold, we were in the mood for a different kind of bean, coffee beans. So we stopped at one of our favorite local coffee shops for a little bean juice. Kate, oh, there's Kate. Hey, Kate. Hey. What up? Oh, what up? What up, what up? Uh, we're doing a little documentary on beans. We came in for some bean juice. On beans? On uh, beans. Yeah, navy beans. Really? Yeah. I love your life, Luke. See? Look. <laughs> You're so random. So this is Kay Voss. Hi, she was Kay. our neighbor for the longest time when we were here in Port Huron. And so uh, we were here filming a documentary on navy beans. So we came to uh, spread the love of bean juice. Bean get, juice, baby. And get some coffee. Yep. So, yeah. If you ever want to smile, definitely come on in, show her some love. She, uh, she is probably the most amazing person in Port Huron and the one we miss the most since moving. So oh, let's get us some coffee. <laughs> so next time you're enjoying some Navy beans, think of Michigan and more specifically, the Thumb of Michigan. And as always, grow bigger. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed, consider checking this one out. You'll probably enjoy it just as much. I wanna thank you so much for your viewership because without it, this channel would not be as amazing as it is. If you haven't subscribed yet, it's free. Consider doing that. We upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, rain or shine. And if you need any garden tools, supplies, or seeds, check out mygardener.com. We got you covered. See you guys in the garden. Bye.